Hey guys, it's Vicki. Hey. Um, this is going to be kind of hard to show you because it's in a uh, big journal. But basically what I did <clears throat> was took um, Artist Spectre Art Tissue and it's supposed to bleed. So I thought, oh that's cool. Let's see what happens. So I stuck with cool colors and um, some of these I attached with double face tape and some I did with an old glue stick. You can see the clots. And it ran okay, but I should have, or could have, put gesso on it first and then glued it down because I got some bleed through here, but luckily it's okay. And the gesso stopped it here and it's the same colors I had on that page, so no mistakes, right? Then I took a little bit of matte medium and just ran my fingers over them to get some wrinkles. What I'm going to do now is put some white gesso on it. This is Liquitex gesso. Because that stuff will continue to run. And I want just a little bit of uh, I want it all to disappear. Come on now. Let's see what a baby wipe is. This book is really just mixed media paper. It's the Dino, Diane Ravely, Dino Wakely. I get them so mixed up. Anyway, it's this one. See? All right. We got a good look. And I think what I'm going to do, I don't think this cloth is ever going to be worth anything to you. I think I can throw that one away. And that one's all glued together. I don't know. Maybe, maybe with some dye or something on it. Um, clean the brush out. I like the way that looks. That's cool. Now I think what I'm going to do is some brush-o. Okay, I can leave that. It can soak all by itself without me doing it and y'all listening to me. I'm going to dry it a little and I'll be right back. I have picked lemon ultramarine and turquoise so first thing i'm going to do is wet these pages pretty good and I think I need a bigger hole. Bigger hole. There we go.
thing that's so cool about these is that there's different little colored granules in every bucket. So ultramarine blue has a few can't tell how much you have Lifting it up so it can swirl around a little. Okay, I'm going to turn this off for a little bit and let this do what it's going to do. Okay, I'm back. Um, I dried that, and then I sprayed on some of my um, Spectrafix. It's the concentrated fixative. You mix it with pure grain alcohol and put it in a painter's spray bottle. And um, it's from my pastel stash. Anyway, I didn't want these colors to run real bad. So now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to put some lemon and some lime green. We're going to see what happens. I'm putting this on dry. comes out the same color as the yellow. Alright. You ready for this? Don't know what we're going to get. Ooh, it is yellow. Big time yellow. That. I'm going to dark brown. Yep. Orange, black, scarlet. I'm going to do some more turquoise. Okay, I'll let it run. Looks like the Enchanted Forest. Let's see, where was that? The one I was thinking about saving. Let's use that one to mop up with. And I'm going to turn this off and dry it. Okay, I sprayed a few spots. And I'm just going to see if I can get a little red to activate. Where did I put it? Uh-oh, I'm still activating blue. Didn't want to do that. 
because I sprayed it. You have to be careful with red, otherwise it looks like somebody's died. Don't know where we're going. Gonna dry. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing, so um, I'm just playing. This is alcohol in a special alcohol brush. Not special in the fact that it's a special kind of brush you gotta go buy. It's the cheapest brush in the whole world I got from American Science Surplus. But, works good enough for this. Taking off a little. I realize how difficult it is for me because I never start anything without a plan of where I'm going to go and how I'm going to get there. I have that little jar of alcohol sitting here, baby food jar, so I can uh, clean nozzles if they get stuck. And I have a separate little jug of water for the alcohol brush. Okay, I'm going to turn this off and dry it, and we'll come back. This month's Stencil Girl stencil has circles, and I sprayed it with White Delusions ink, and I'm going to blot it. I just moved it. Dang it. Lot it with that page. Picked up a little. And blot it with that page. Well, I'm going around in circles and it seems like everything I pick up and then go back and look for is missing or in the floor or fell in the trash. But I used a round jelly plate with some PBO paint and I think I'm going to quit right now because I don't have any mojo for it right now. And I'll finish it up the next time I get to work on it. See ya. I have 
forgotten to turn on the camera, as I say right there. All I did was drew a rough outline of the edge of the flowers. Um, <clears throat> measuring, making sure I had the width and the height correct for the space I had. And then around that light, inside that light pencil line, I put white gesso. And it might have been the Waverly plaid, Waverly Inspirations plaid in plaster because it's not a white white and it's a little more absorbent <clears throat> for the watercolor. All I'm doing in here is I'm looking at a picture, a photograph, and I'm finding the darks. And I'm being very careful with them, very cautious, and not going in real dark at first so that I can go back. Knowing that the watercolor is going to dry lighter, I've got all kinds of options to keep going back into this until I think it looks like a rose. Reds are a little bit hard because you can only get so dark with them. Um, <clears throat> if you go into a lizard and crimson, you're giving it a real cool red. And these particular flowers were orangey on top and purpley red on bottom. So that made it, um, made it real interesting to do. So you can kind of see me bringing in the warmer orange reds. But the flower won't come to life until the lights are on it. And the light or the white where the sun's hitting it from the upper left won't have any effect at all until you get your darks in. And then that's when the lights and the darks next to each other really make it pop. Using a Q-tip here to kind of pull out some of the color that gives that shape a little bit of a rounded, rounded petal look. This particular bud was a new, obviously a bud, but it was more lizard and crimson on the outside. And this particular rose apparently, when it matures, turns more orange. And dotting back in with some darker colors. Always keep in mind when you're painting on anything that you need to get firm in your mind where the light is coming from. And in this case, it's coming from the upper left. And you, after a while, you kind of quit looking at the picture and you can feel what that light would hit on the raised forms. And this rose is going particularly well. I'm not really following the photograph other than just it got me started. But you start seeing shapes, and roses have petals that go every which direction, so. It's all done. The form is all completed and accomplished with the value, which is the darker, the darkness of the color. So the lightest light is where the sun hits, and as that form rolls away from the light, it gets darker and cooler. There's your art lesson for today. Coming back in with a little light, I'm, I think I'm using gesso at this point. And of course it is translucent, so it's not going to give me the white, white, hot accents that I really like to have. But since this is in my journal, I'm not stressing over it, which is exactly where I need to be. This is not a portrait of a rose, this is the illusion of a rose. When I go back into those darker areas, I don't rub them. I just barely lay that pigment in there and maybe encourage it to soften on the hard edge just a little. If you get in there and really mush around on it, you kill the color 
and you're going to make mud because everything underneath it is going to dissolve. And I added what, it's a dark blue, it's not ultramarine, it's a, a Daniel Smith color I have on this palette. And added that to make a dark purple with that red. Here's what the painting looked like, or that journal page looked like the day I did it and finished for the day. I picked it up another day and did some bleach. I took some white gesso and very lightly accented these lines from the stencil. Left some of the brush -o. Here you can see some more of the bleach. And what I did, I put down a stencil from Stencil Girl. It's Maria McGuire's Rose. And I used the Pan Pastel Pearlescent Pink and a little bit of purple. And I really liked the way that looked. And I came back in with the bleach pen and went around the areas that I thought felt like would be lighter. And went around the areas I thought would be darker with a, um, with a darker watercolor. Just to give this a little bit of form so it would stand out just a little bit more. And it worked out really good. I was pleased with it. These are bleach marks, which work great on the watercolor. Um, just dots here and there, just to add some texture. And I was real happy with it. The other thing that I did was sprayed white delusions across the top. And I love the way the white delusions picks up the soluble watercolor underneath it and changes the color of the drip as it goes down. I think that's just fascinating. And again, these were illusions of roses, not real roses, so it didn't hurt me to uh, spray white delusions on them. Here you can see the spread. I came back in with Photoshop and got rid of the gutter. Um, but on the right-hand page, you can see the uh, delusions I sprayed at the top and then let it drip down. And I really like the hazy look it gives it. And stamped it with the date and put my little name underneath it and called this one done. Sorry I didn't film more of it. I um, had a brain fart and forgot where I was and what I was doing. So hope this helps for anybody that's interested. Bye. I'll talk to you all later.